Welcome everyone to the Underground Sound. I am DJ Sec. With me, as always, is Carlos Fandango. Um, oh my god! There's <laughs> <laughs> a new <laughs> blooper reel coming. <laughs> we were just talking about this. We were just talking about this. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, did you have the words "Don't fuck it up" in your head? <laughs> oh, <probably. laughs> oh my god! All right. Um, Deep breath get the giggles out all right <laughs> okay well uh welcome everyone to the underground sound i am dj exec with me as always is carlos fandango together we are putting the us back into music so please do like subscribe and share and we'll find the music that you love to hear absolutely we will and uh for those of you that don't know if you hop on our website us underground not oh my god Oh, it's here, of course. Yeah, us underground. <laughs> no, I don't want to. Get, I don't want to abbreviate it U.S. because it just makes it sound like United States, right? So yeah, yeah. Alrighty. Uh, come on, Tom. You can do this. You can do it, man. Do it. Okay. <laughs> uh, welcome everyone to I think take four of the <laughs> underground sound. Uh, I am DJ Exec. With me as always is Carlos Fandango. Together we are putting the us back in the music. So please do like, subscribe, and share, and we'll find the music that you love to hear. Absolutely. If you hop onto the website usundergroundsound.com, you will find a link in the menu there that goes to our Spotify playlist. And uh, all the music that you enjoy here, you can find on the Spotify playlist. Add them to your playlist. Let's show these uh, musicians some love and give them the recognition that they deserve. Want to send a very special uh, shout out and thank you to our show sponsor, Nathan Brashear of Monsters Are Real, as per usual. So um, thank you, Nathan. Um, and keep stay tuned, I should say for the uh, for our upcoming Christmas episode, uh, which will feature Nathan's song a very metal christmas which has an awesome music video to go along with it and uh we're very much looking forward to doing our christmas episode and we are very much looking forward to doing our new year's eve episode our best of the 2022s but for right now we are still in 20 we are still in 2022 actually so <laughs> i don't know i don't know where i was going to go with that but we, we are still in in uh, 2022 right now and um and uh, we've listened to some some fantastic music and uh, it's really going to be difficult trying to sort out uh, a few artists to take the uh, top spots of the 2022s here um we very much have enjoyed doing the show this year obviously and uh, we hope that you enjoy watching us listening to us and listening to obviously all these uh, fantastic indie musicians and uh keeping it going though today uh, today will be december 2nd 2022 as we're recording i'm like losing my mind here i think but i'm just gonna i'm just gonna keep going because we're not starting from the top all over again uh keeping up with our show for today though um what do we have here Right, well, the opening track um, is by Sol Viva, S-O-L Viva. So um, the song is called Carolina Country Blues. Now, Sol Viva are, <clears throat> this is a new release, uh, to, actually today on the day of recording, it's actually officially out now. So it says, rocking bass player and awesome singer from Asheville, uh, North Carolina, another North Carolina. Uh, roots in rock, blues, and alternative and soul. Beatles fan, general music lover, producer, multi instrumentalist, songwriter, stoner. Um, but uh, basically, um, yes, uh, Ian Harrod is the chap who's behind the act called Survivor. Uh, so I thought this one might be quite a good, rousing sort of uh, opening track for us this week. We got uh so it says it's in the blues category and new release on december 2nd december 2nd being today as carlos had mentioned uh soul viber with uh 35 plays thus far six saves seven and a half fires about to be the 36th play let's check this one out carolina country blues Choose. 
some tobacco Watch this graphic pop up. Ba-dang. That one says, wow. Wow, wow, wow. Carlos Fandango, take it away. You might. That's good. That's good. I um yeah, it's funny enough. The um the I was trying to look up just then because I couldn't remember who recorded the original BBC TV show Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, the theme tune to that. Uh, it might have been Herbie Flowers or some something like that, but it was it was um for some reason it might be the banjo riff actually but it's it's kind of that reminded me of of the spirit of that song but really other than that i mean you know it's to be just called blues is doing it a disservice it's sort of more of a country rock blues um well it's it's a mixture of things but it's heavily got this sort of uh, eagles vibe to it with the vocals and the music i mean the tight harmonies glenn frey style of vocals um uh, when the shakers come in as well yeah, the song really starts going kind of thing it's just just got that really well produced um air about it and um loved it absolutely loved it the i remember hearing it and thinking oh yeah it's quite good yeah i quite like that one but this time around i actually really thought it was good and and it stays in your head as well the carolina country blues blues chorus uh so um yeah i i think that's a pretty 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 good song it was you turned off your video oh by the way bugger <laughs> it's the same no. old thing so what did i press <laughs> what I was it again I, it was i can't be pressing uh, command and something else surely no, that, that, that was probably like command o or something <laughs> <laughs> For, oh bugger oh right, okay bugger <laughs> yeah no uh listen uh you know when the song started off i kind of like I got I got this Bon Jovi feel to it, like it was gonna be oh. like, like like Dead or Alive or something like that. Because uh, you know, as you mentioned, just saying that it's blues does it a disservice because it is like country rock blues. It's kind of like a a mesh. Maybe we could call it uh, you know a genre like clues. You know what clues, I mean? Clues, yeah. Clues, yeah. Country blues. Cruise. Okay. Country rock blues, yeah. Country cruise. There you go. Even better. Love it. Uh, but listen, pro production. Love the clear vocals. Love the fact that that you know um, really brought the vocals forward. The, the the instruments were all kind of like mixed correctly. Everything was was done really 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 well there. Um, so the vocals were clear. The story was clear. Love that little banjo in the background too, like bam, you know. And um, this is like one of those songs I feel that that could make you a um, a fan of country music. You know, if you're not a fan of country music and like, let's say, like alternative or rock or whatever, the song would probably get you into uh, into country music. It, it had all the right elements. I mean, it was great singing. It was it was it was fun. It was very vibey. Um, it just has a, a really nice ring to it. Where you know, like throughout the show, I'm pretty sure that it's going to keep ringing in my head. There, so this song definitely wow, definitely playlisted. Um, can't really, I don't know, Survivor. Can't really, can't really give you any advice here. You can't do any better than you've just done, because that that song really works on a level of recording as well as a live performance. I'm sure that people would be going wild and dancing when they hear that, you know. So, nice job, Survivor. Nice job, mm. Carolina Country Blues. Beautiful. Absolutely agree. Yeah, I, I say if you like that one, you'll like the Eagles, and if you like the Eagles, you'll like that one. If you like Bon Jovi, you'll probably like. Yeah, it's definitely had that. I wanted dead or alive feel to it that's for sure i've, yeah, I've that, forgotten that. about that actually that was one of the things it reminded me of okay, i'm glad okay. you said that yeah 
what reminded me of it was that was that little twanginess that was in there and you know and then the guitar solo that came in i, I couldn't really pinpoint whether it was an electric guitar or or like a uh, or like a slide guitar um it kind of sounded like it could have been both but i mean in either either way that song just works it works it's a great song lovely beautiful mm. nicely done great show starter for the underground sound remember folks if you don't know where to find these musicians you can visit the video description below and you will find the links to these artists or you can also visit the us underground sound.com and you can find the playlists and the uh, the tracks and everybody there so uh whichever way you want to find these artists please do so show some love because uh that's that that the awesomeness of the music that's being pumped out is just incredible so moving on to track two here we have uh rick moore looks like uh yeah he's rick uh, moore stupid man i'm not calling rick moore a stupid man this song's called yeah. stupid man uh, it's called stupid so, so. <laughs> but now you you complained a little last week that we had too many uk artists and uh, not i enough did yet. not complain <laughs> well okay <laughs> commented commented, commented. <laughs> I may have I said a there word. There were loads of UK artists, yeah. and there was a theme developing. So this time, it looks like it's just you know tons of US artists. This guy's from, well, it's a bit of UK in there anyway. It's Nottingham, but Pennsylvania, Nottingham, Pennsylvania. Singer, songwriter, multi instrumentalist, producer, arranger, Rick Moore, and um, of this song called "Stupid Man." This song is from an album that was completed in the early two thousands but never released until 2020. The album is called Etudes from a Tobacconist. Ah, interesting. So, um, but yeah, I, I thought this one was a, a, cure, a bit of a curious song. So I um, thought you might find it quite interesting. Etudes from a Tobacconist. Hmm. And I think the word etude is is actually um, it's like a sort of practice for the fun of it and for the pleasure or playing for the pleasure of it. So, uh, um, and exploring ideas and things. Okay. Well, I was just thinking, is like, is this like um, journeys of a smoker? <laughs> it could well be. <laughs> it's use of a tobacconist. Uh, in either case, uh, let's let's hope that Rick Moore is not a stupid man. This uh, the song is also available on. I'm pretty sure most of Rick's body of work here is going to be available on Spotify, YouTube, Amazon Music, and uh, and uh, Apple Music. I always want to say iTunes, but it's Apple Music. I got. I, I have a little bit of beef with Apple today. Uh, having read some news earlier, I'll talk about that after we review the song. But let's check this one out right now. This is Rick Moore with "Stupid Man." Darkness 
right there carlos fandango yes now this is interesting because uh i really like the sound of this one and i think it the other song we've just heard a moment ago was was a really sort of slick and smooth production uh this one is good production but it feels like a home studio production and a very much a live instrument production in some respects in respect of predominantly the um the drum sound feels live and loose to me you know it feels like it's it's probably on a metronome but it's just just feels like it's a bit loose which i i like and i love the snare sound he's got in there uh but i like the array of instruments he uses because he uses finger cymbals which are really underused a really good instrument to use and uh, it just adds extra dimension. So they had that and uh, probably a Mellotron in there as well and a few other things uh, going on. So so very nice. Um, the vocally, to me, sounded a bit like a cross between Greg Lake of Emerson, Lake and Palmer, who did the I Believe in Father Christmas track, and uh, Tom Petty, a little bit of Tom Petty in there as well, in the style of the singing as well and the delivery. But I think the um, whilst it's not overly similar to Emerson, Lake and Palmer's lucky man track the chords are sort of similar in a way and it has that vibe of lucky man and that's a really good song as well so uh all in all i really like that song it's got a great sort of upbeat vibe about it and um it just sort of chugs along nicely so that's a nice traveling journeying song i think if you're out in your car on the highway freeway motorway whatever you know or autobahn wherever you are in the world you could just drive along to that one and uh let the hair sorry let the uh, wind blow through your uh, scalp <laughs> old head scalp yes <laughs> through your beard hair there you go yeah no um i like that you know for for me it felt very nostalgic I, i'm kind of like picking up on the tom petty vibe that you were talking about for me i was thinking this kind of sounds like more a little bit like like maybe like verb verb pipe or like uh like hootie and the blowfish right um something something along those lines it's kind of it's it's rocky but it's it's calm right so uh definitely a nice song as you as you're talking about like listening to this on a road trip you're out and about you know you got the wind blowing through whatever your eyebrow hair what whatever the case may be uh, but I, I do feel like it was a home production not that that was bad because it, it's it's a pleasant song to listen to um in either case right but i did i did notice that i don't know if you picked up on this that it, it kind of like sounded especially in the beginning that the uh, bass clipped the audio a little bit so i think that the bass could have been toned down um just a tad just to kind of like make it work overall I, I mean good song i mean i think i think that uh that you know you talk about ebb and flow i think that the ebb and flow works nicely with this one um it, it is 
again catchy and vibey just like what we were talking about with the last song it's kind of like one of those one of those songs where you could develop you know an earworm for it um you know during the chorus and and you know you're listening to this melody you know during the break and i think overall nicely done it's not the greatest production but it's good it's good and it's definitely good enough to uh to listen to so that's my two cents there Fair enough. I think it is good enough to listen to, and it's just, just, uh, yeah, probably lacking the finesse of the other one. But I don't think it needs the finesse of the other one next because it just feels more of a sort of natural track, really, in that respect. Yeah. No. Absolutely. The the again, this is one of those songs where you could definitely sit and vibe to this if it were being played yeah. live. You know what I mean? So nothing wrong with the track at all. Um, I'd like to hear a little bit more by by uh, by Rick Moore. Um, Sounds good. I like it. Once again, folks, visit the video description below. Find the links. Show the artist some love here. And uh, it is that time for us here on the Underground Sound. It is the time, Purple Bowl. I should ask my lovely assistant. Bowl, please. Bowl, please. Oh, thank you all. <laughs> right, so we have the Purple Bowl. Oh, I better do this uh, on my head to think. I don't know if it worked last time on my head. Uh, well, I'll look away. I'll look away this time. Just Straight to prove that no cheating. I won't look. I won't look. You say okay. when? I'll, I'll better do my chant as well. Om Nim Shivya. Om Nim Shivya. Stop. Right. I can't even grab one. It's, they're escaping. Ah, oh, there we are. There's a clear winner there. They're taking an entire handful. <laughs> well, we are an independent music show, and this is indie. Mm, indie. We had this just last week, did we not? I think we did. We had something to do with indie, didn't we? I think it was on the bowl as well. The bowl keeps choosing it. It's just it's got this thing about indie music at the moment. Or was it that we had Pocket Watch was um, indie based music or something? Oh, that's right. Because I described that one as that's what I one of the type of sounds I describe as indie as a as a genre as of its own, rather than independent music. All so, right. Well, so we, up? we have a hot off the presses, folks, posted just not but 36 minutes ago. Um, a group called Say That Again. The name of the song is called Inside Out. Let's get a little bit more information here. Uh, based out of Kansas City, Missouri in the United States. Um, it says Tress and Peeler. Not not any kind of a bio, but Inside Out says, this is our first single from our upcoming full-length album, driving bass and drums, make way for catchy melody from the vocals and guitar. It is labeled as alternative rock and indie, and uh, this uh, this looks like a proper, proper kind of indie song. So just 36 minutes ago, 36 minutes with eight plays, 14 fires, this will be Say That Again with their song, Inside Out.
turn it inside out. What's happened? The next song started playing, like right after. Oh, it is. <laughs> yeah, I couldn't um, hear it. So okay. Oh, did you did you hear that song? I heard the song. Okay, but, mm, I couldn't hear anything afterwards. So. <laughs> okay. So, um, excuse me. So that was uh, Tress and Peeler. It looks like what the name is here. Uh, so posted thirty six minutes ago. Name of the band is Say That Again. Name of the song is Inside Out. Carlos Fandango. What did you think? Yeah, I mean, actually, when you look at the artwork there, I don't know if you could see the um, or bring that up on screen for Say That Again. It was reminded, and now this is a throwback to show how old I am, but uh, it's not quite the same stylization of uh, the same st lettering style. But that Say That Again just reminded me straight away, plus the scene uh, of different strokes from the uh, you know, the late 70s, uh, early 80s TV series, Arnold and uh, uh Dudley or whatever it was his name uh but uh yeah just just reminding me of that I don't know why but um but the song yeah he wasn't lying it was very catchy from the get-go um particularly with the hand claps um that really sort of gets you straight into it but you could hear that it could be a very good live song it probably he's a bass player by the looks of it um by trade and um yeah that would be a very good live track I could imagine that they could bring the hand claps back in uh in a portion of the song in a live version to get the crowd going um for me yeah lots of stop start moments in it very good catchy upbeat energetic and the artist it would remind me of slightly vocally but particularly with the music would be morrissey um a lot of his <laughs> solo stuff has been that kind of sound particularly with the guitars uh, the electric guitar sound and um I thought that had the same kind of sort of uh, vibe and energy as a Morrissey song. So I actually think the bowl chose well again. I do as well. And I'm actually kind of surprised because, you know, sometimes the bowl has led us astray as it were, <laughs> but uh, yeah, from the looks of it, uh, you know, it looks like, it looks like a young guy here. Um, I'm not sure if, if there's a full band going on here or if it is just, uh, just him, obviously no bio. We don't really have all that much information. Um, so I liked the vocal breaks. You know, we had the instruments come in, all the instruments, all the instruments would drop. We had the vocal break, and then all the instruments would start back up again. Had a very nice kind of like a punky feel to it. Very catchy. Um, you know, earwormy. Um, so it did sound like like a uh, like an amateur production. 
Yeah, I'd agree with that. Yeah, it does sound like that. But uh, the, I think it's meant to sound raw. Yeah, I, I do too. I, I do as well. Because like what you're talking about with the claps is the claps, they were they were there, then they disappeared. And that was kind of it where, you know, I think they would have worked nicely if they were kind of like faded into the uh, into the background. Um, but again, we've been having a lot of these songs where, you know, this could be a, a good song uh, to see performed live. And, um, and and your point on Morrissey here, I think, was was kind of like spot on because uh, it, it, it does sound, um, you know, towards that towards that nature. So um, I think um, if this is one of your first productions, you're only going to get better at it. Seriously, because that one, that one was catchy for, for the way that it was. If this was your intention for it to sound like it, then, you know, then you did a great job, you know, in either case. So, uh, nicely done. Liked it. Yeah, I agree. I've just added a comment myself, added a bit of fire as well. Cause I think that was good. Well worth a listen. Good job. There we have for song number four on this 19th episode of the underground sound. Corteza de Sauce. Yes, just on a translation of this one. And by the way, so we have had three from the USA. So now we're going to Teola in España. So off to sunny Spain. Viva España. Um, and it, this, the bio is in Spanish, but it translates as we are Willow Bock, which is Corteza de Sauce. Apparently it's Willow Bock. Uh, not sure if that's an accurate translation or not, but uh, we have released the first single and soon we will release a few more. So, um, yeah, looks like they're, um, this is the first one they've uploaded and it was only posted 26 days ago. They only joined, I think fairly recently. Looks like they have, um, Motorhead, Black Sabbath, Red Hot Chili Peppers, Foo Fighters, Judas Priest, Iron Maiden, Ozzy Osbourne, um, among their, um, influences. So, um, but I don't think that comes across particularly much in, if I can remember rightly, that it's not too much of that in here because it does retain its spanishness and latinesque feel so maybe it's a spanish ozzy osbourne mm, could be i'll translate also the song right. description in due course while we're listening to it okay well let's well, get to it, it. Like, it with uh 26 plays 55 fires also available on spotify uh please check out right now cortez de saz tritamic con alma Hace tiempo que anda dormido Ese motivo que nos conectó Con cualquier alma que huele cerca De nuestro nido aquel que cuidamos Y no sentimos no y no dejamos que hablen nuestras mentes y que mueran las apariencias que matan el sentido de tratar a la gente hablando Estamos aquí para siempre y así poder Encontrar un lugar con gente que nos ama Liberé a mi orgullo y no le hice un castillo Y yo acepté mis prejuicios y los dejé libres para Esas manchadas de negro que tiñan sus faldas Que no todos tenemos la fuerza 
para quitarlas con magia de hadas. No sentimos no. Cortez de Sas, Tatame con Alma. You know, we talk about guitar solos a lot, but how about a harmonica solo, Carl? That was most unexpected, wasn't it? I'd, I'd forgotten all about that, actually, when I chose this song uh, to play, because I think that's one of the things that really caught my ear, because you don't often hear harmonica much these days. Um, and it was done in a, a sort of old style of playing as well. And, um, yeah, very sort of 60, 70 style of uh, harmonica playing. So I, I really, really like that aspect to it. Um, it did actually have a really good structure. It's a very well considered, well thought out song, solid production, really nice array of instruments. You had subtle brass in there. It was never overbearing and overpowering. Bongos, so bongos and brass, what could possibly go wrong? You've got harmonica, which was unexpected. The rhythm and the time signatures kept changing, and it's sort of ebb and flow factors are definite eight on that one because it just, just kept changing all the way through. And so, and the end refrain where dead, 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 that bit with the harmonica and the brass together, that was irresistible. So I actually think it's an excellent song. It's a bit different and um you know it's alt rock and so forth and actually the title uh, translates on google translate at least on, as treat me with soul so it's basically it was dealing with uh, the topic of treating other people nicely and considerate with consideration really um you, you know so um so i think um an interesting song all round actually really good I think it was good. I, uh, you know, it, when the song started off, as I was like, I've never heard an Aussie ballad before. Actually, I have, obviously. But um, no, um, you know what? I like the strong vocals. Yes, very manly vocals, right? It's kind of like that deep pitch to it. Uh, very nice uh, singing. And, and uh, like you're talking about with the ebb and flow, I like the fact that it starts off as this ballad. And then like, you know, the, 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 the three quarters of the way through, it turns into this kind of like monster, kind of like rock song. Right. But the, um, the, uh, the harmonica constantly like in my mind, uh, kept on replaying like blues traveler in my head. You know, it was just like that sort of music, but in, in Spanish. And so it had this really catchy feel to it in the harmonica, you know, I mean, it's not like, it's not like the most beautiful instrument that there is out there <laughs> you know it's a uh, it's very twangy high pitched usually but the people that do it right can make it sound really really oh so good right and i think that that's what was going on in, in this song here this is 
a person that's obviously kind of like had a harmonica in their hand their entire life and they've been kind of like just going at it you know throughout their uh throughout their uh, daily life and everything like that so um the production was good it is a very latin-esque song as you had mentioned before and uh, going back to a previous point that i think that we had made during the uh, second song or that you had made during the second song i should say was that this is a road trip kind of song where you're in the car and you know everything's kind of like just moving along in this road trip kind of thing you're arriving at your destination maybe you know and uh, it really does have that kind of feel for it so you know i think we're on a really good uh we're on a really good roll with good music on this show so far carl nicely mm. done yeah we've had some good ones so far now we, we've <laughs> which brings us actually to i was gonna um I was, and, yeah, I was gonna segue into it and say with that said f you to the moon <laughs> <laughs> exactly yes uh this is the cyber tones uh back to america north carolina again oh, uh, this is, i think that's the most represented state that we've had um since this show started because we keep getting these nc bands and acts coming up so um it's uh it's definitely outnumbered any other state i think um but they're in black mountain north carolina the cyber tones band it just says do, 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 do. I think Nathan's great from Black Mountain. Hmm? I think Nate I think that I think that Nathan's from around Black Mountain. Really? I think so. Don't quote me uh, on it. I, I don't quote me on it. I'll have to make sure. But for, you know what? From from what this kind of like theme that we've been going on, we've had a lot of North Carolina folk out here. So um I think I think we'll definitely have to do a little bit of promo going towards uh, towards North Carolina. But I but yeah, but I do think that Nathan is from from like right around there. Like the name like like the name sticks with me, and it's not like the, the like the typical kind of name that's gonna stick with you, like Chicago. You know, it's Black yeah. Mountain, right? So uh, we, we better give a warning for this one, by the way, uh, before we go too far, because uh, <laughs> FU to the moon isn't flip you or fudge you. It's uh, something else. So uh, just in case you have sensitive viewers out there, just uh, who cares? Um, so basically, um, <laughs> this is by the Cybertones, and it says highly explicit. And um, yes, well, it is. And it's a bit different, though, but I thought you might enjoy it because it's uh, we had uh, I can't find a clip before, didn't we? So let's uh, FU to the moon. Uh, is on par with that i say not as a comedy song necessarily but just as a interesting song well we did have uh white boy chili was the one that couldn't find the clit um <laughs> so we'll give you five seconds to turn your speakers down or take your headphones off because this one does have a warning with highly explicit and carlos is saying it's highly explicit so um f you to the moon Come 
that it needed the highly explicit warning on there i know of a song that's 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 kind of like let's say uh you know quote unquote worse than that but carl carlos fandango let's hear your thoughts here well i mean it's just a these days a commonly used word and it's overused probably but uh <laughs> certainly overused in this song but uh it's um yeah somebody wearing their heart on their sleeve not caring i, I think you know this is somebody who just just doesn't give a flying one and uh it's quite funny lyrics and i i like it it's just something about it i mean um i think i had it playing and susie was a sort of a little bit thinking oh, what is this what are you listening to now but uh uh <laughs> there's something about it that actually made me laugh i i think also that it uses the paco bell canon accord structure yeah like the oasis don't look back in anger type of chord thing um but for me there was something i mean the lyrics yeah about the you know him having 29 kids and suck my balls and all those kind of things just just made me chuckle um there was something about it that was almost pink floydy and in, in the, the sort of roger waters part of pink floyd uh if he if he really let loose this is what i feel like he could be yeah he could sound like yeah roger waters if he was just just doing something that he wasn't it just isn't it mucking about in the studio that's what yeah, sound. He, it's he, something like, about his pronunciation that that and, and the way he was singing it felt like roger waters to me so i quite like that aspect of it so like if roger waters just didn't give a fuck is what you're saying <laughs> exactly that yes, yes. <laughs> listen um uh, there's there's a much worse song here's here's the tab for it it's uh by insane clown posse it's actually called fuck the world um i think they they, they counted the 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 you know the f-bomb whatever fuck they kind of fuck in there you know x amount of times so um maybe check that one out during the break and and you'll see that that this is a very tame song compared to that one i quite like the production of this one um the production sounds pretty solid um kind of a point that we were making before when we were talking when we got into this like political sphere here and everything like that whereas if you don't like my song turn it off right that's mm -hmm. all that that's all that you have to do so if you don't enjoy this kind of music you know go ahead and you know f you and you don't have to listen to it this is the whole thing it's it's, it's the freedom of it right so so um a little bit of a political undertone i do quite like i think there's a lot of threats in here though you know so i don't know if it's like unresolved issues or if it's just part of making the song the way that it is but yeah um the, don't look at my wife uh you know i'll i'll slice you up uh, my 29 kids you know there's like <laughs> threats galore going on here so uh i'm thinking that this may be a song that's kind of like um that's got a lot of a little bit of maybe like a little bit of beef undertone to it you know what i mean like somebody's somebody's uh got some kind of issue with somebody else and and maybe the song was written for that kind of uh for that purpose or it could just be in this kind of like political sphere that we're in and everything like that so um yeah um so yeah this I, this is this is a libertarian isn't it i mean quite frankly it's uh somebody who believes in the individual and freedom of choice and freedom of expression absolutely which is which is what we should believe in because again if you don't like the music you don't have to listen to it nobody is sitting there like pointing a gun to your head saying listen to this except for us we're doing that right now we got the underground sound visit the video description below find the links to all of these artists and if you like their music listen to them if you don't like their music you don't have to we're just kidding about that so uh we are going to take our little break here uh but once again great song uh the cybertones f you to the moon um i liked it really catchy song we'll be back for the second half of the underground sound very shortly i am djx tech with me as always as carlos fandango we are putting the us back into music so please do like subscribe and share and we'll find the music that you love to hear and we shall be back shortly it'll be very seamless watch this and that was our break very seamless to all i am dj sec and with me as always is carlos fandango we are back for the second half of the underground sound where we are putting the us back into music so please do like subscribe and share and let's get your music out there 
and we shall get your music out there. If uh, if you'd like to submit music, then please, by all means, go on to usundergroundsound.com, find the Music Submit tab there. You'll find a way to get a hold of us and to uh, submit your music, and we will find you. And I got to say, I got to say, the second half has a, uh, a lot of work to do to catch up with the first half. The first half was really good. It was a very strong first half of the show, actually, yes. So... Ah, uh, let me have a quick scan through the second half. Well, obviously, we don't know about the purple. The purple bowl, what that chooses, this is how exciting it is, what that chooses could tip it either way in favour or, yeah, because we had five strong songs there, five good songs, and they're all different. These are going to be, I think, five good songs, strong songs. Well, four of them. The purple bowl is the the unknown. That's the... That's the uh, you know, unknown factor that we've, we you know, it could throw up a poor song or a really stonkingly good song. It is that monkey wrench that's thrown into the engine while it's working. So uh, we'll, we'll figure it out as we go along here. But uh, getting on to song number six here, we have uh, Charlie Beeler. I was going to say Beefer. Uh, it looked like Beefer to me for a second, but getting my trusty magnifying glass out over here. Charlie Beeler, the song's name is special. What can you tell me about the song, Carl? Uh, okay, I think, uh, yeah, contemporary, it's this nostalgic love song, but I'm sure this was more of a sort of contemporary sort of modern style of pop song, really, but uh, it is under pop, an uh, unsigned artist, uh, and Charlie Beeler himself is from Chattanooga, I guess that's Tennessee, TN, US, yeah, USA, I love the word Chattanooga, it's such a good word, um, and his influences, not multitudinous, but they do include uh, Bazzi, JVKE, Drake, I've heard of, Post Malone, I've heard of, and Justin Bieber, I've heard of. But um, so, uh, yeah, um, young guy, I think he's what? I can't remember, I've read somewhere, he's 17 years old. I don't know, maybe not. But uh, he's, he's a young, young, young artist, singer, songwriter. He says, I'm an artist who produces pop RB music. So, and this song is called Special. Well, uh, let's take a listen to it, because with influences like that, it's kind of strange to see him having a, 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 a guitar strung over his back like like the way that it is. So uh, this is Charlie Beeler with the song Special. Um, it is available on Spotify, iTunes, and YouTube. And once again, if you need to find these artists, please visit the video description below. You'll find the links there and know everything that you need to know to add them to your playlists. So here we go. Charlie Beeler. Song is called Special. Hey, I know you've been too caught up trying to find the perfect love. And I know any guy is lucky just to talk to you. But hey, all the other girls the same. Everything is just too fake. And I don't wanna go back to my older ways Cause you're so special and I'm just sentimental But we look good together, hope you know that I care Cause you take me to levels that I have never been to Yeah, we could live forever, girl, just trust me, I swear Heart so intricate, you know, I don't wanna break it I don't wanna break it, no When you look at me with those eyes so perfect I feel perfect You could be anything you wanna be But you look better when you're with me Yeah, I tell you all the time And I hope you know that you're so special And I'm just saying a man oh, But we look good together, hope you know Special and I'm just saying a man over we look good together Hope you know that I care Cause you take me to levels that I have never been to Yeah, we could live forever, girl, just trust me, I swear
That was special by Charlie Beeler. Carlos Fernando, take it away, sir. I think it was rather special. I think the out from the outset, you've got this nice sounding sort of um guitar -y synth thing going on. Dum 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 dum. This makes it a very magical sound, actually. And uh, and you've got that nice major to minor chord as well in there, which actually I noticed at the end of the uh, the that thing that's doing that at the end there's a very slight subtle chord change at the end is really nice touch um i think he's got a really great voice if he's written that song himself um very promising because it's very radio friendly very commercial very contemporary um i'll pick up on this vocal affectation again with the joist by coys it's all going on there it's just a thing that people sing like these days but i did like when he went to the higher range of his voice in the slow part where it all stopped and it was just him singing um and then he came out with the i can give you anything that line there where he sung that i felt like that was really him there singing that's what how i'd love to hear him sing more of because he really really you know just just came across as just him singing there not being uh, having any affectations um I think the line where he's singing so perfect, I'm so perfect, or, or whatever it was, um, the P popped a little bit. So I'd be conscious just on the production side to uh, either sing away from the mic and re really that sort of thing. It's better to re-record uh, the line and, and get it right because you can soften it by, with the automation and the fade-ins but it's easy just to sort of sing it and, and sing it softly. So that's one thing to be bear in mind. It sounded to me like it popped. And the only thing um, I would say otherwise, uh, the criti critically, stylistically that I didn't like, or that's not to my taste, I should say, is that the um, sub bass is a little heavy. So, so the bass and the kick drum in particular are a little bit heavy for my liking. I think I would soften those down, soften the subs down a little bit. Although that is the modern style, everything is all sub bass these days. So, you know, what can you do? But, um, but, it, but it's that makes it a contemporary sounding song. This radio friendly, very good. Well, um, I like the song. It's definitely, it's definitely commercially viable because if you think, um. You know, digging around in my brain right now, we were talking just just before we came back about you know like maybe having Alzheimer's and you know forgetting stuff. There was there was a song that was done by Justin Bieber and Ed Sheeran, and um, you know so commercially viable is an understatement because I do believe that he has this kind of like Justin Bieber kind of like feel to him, uh, along with Ed Sheeran because um, I don't know if he has any more tracks you know where he's actually playing instruments because this sounded more more pop than it did anything right so the picture is kind of a, a little misleading because he's got that guitar slung over his back and everything like that right so it kind of like it gives that inclination like he's going to be playing the guitar and it's going to be a little bit rocky maybe um but the thing is is uh the comment that i left there is uh okay so i'm a big fan of bass I like bass. Boom, boom, boom. I, I've always had like, you know, nice speakers hooked up in my cars and everything like that. Now that I'm getting older, I tend to keep my music a little bit lower because <laughs> somebody asked me one time, like, do you feel old? And I'm like, I don't necessarily feel old. It's just that everything is like getting loud and heavy all of a sudden, you know? So, um, so it's kind of like one of those things. So it sounded like there was a lot of clips in the song, a lot of clipping. A lot of basically going above above where the threshold of the um of the volume is and uh so when you're talking about the the uh the sub bass and the kick drum i think that that's one of those problems is that it's clipping it's going it's going well beyond its um you know its natural ability if you work with the compression this is what helps you out with the um with the deepness in the bass and the kick drum where you can still have that nice kind of like boom to it but you're not actually you know blowing the subwoofers apart so um from from the from the looks of the photo and from the uh, from the profile and like you had mentioned probably looked like he was 17 years old at one point or you had seen that somewhere then you know you're talking about a young producer who's coming into his own and everything like that um and if this is like the first of things to come then i think that there's a very bright future ahead because and especially if he's kind of like doing the music and writing the lyrics and kind of like composing all of this stuff himself then i think that there's 
a very, very bright, bright, bright future right in front of you there. So, um, yeah, I'm I'd just... agree. I'd agree. I think he's. I think he's a, a talent to watch. I really do. Yeah. So, um, the, once again, folks, when we make comments like the like you know they may sound bad they're not really bad it's constructive criticism we do mean constructive criticism to all the folks that we that we uh, leave comments for and that we talk to uh because you know i mean i i think that everybody has a bit of a musical soul in them like uh you know even if you're not heavily into music you've definitely hummed the tune inside your head at one point which Maybe you thought like, oh, where's this coming from? I've never heard this song before. Well, this is your natural creativity coming out. So I think that everybody, uh, music is the one thing that that can bind us all together. So um, wherever you are in the world, uh, obviously, if you've been with us from the beginning, you know that we've, that we've heard songs from Portugal, Uruguay. <laughs> we've heard songs from Romania, from Russia. Um, all over the world and all of these songs are fantastic uh we've been in the music uh industry for for quite some time carl and i and um you know again this is just meant to be constructive criticism and just to kind of like give our opinions on the way that we feel about uh one particular song and if you don't like it once again you don't have to listen to it but please do visit the video description below find these artists if you do like the songs and show them some love this is the way that we can get new music out there to the to the masses so um mm, so do you, do you think that's also you mentioned mm. about the um bass as well do you think that's part of getting older you sort of like uh because I, I just i just i've never liked sub bass to two sub sub it just just does my ears in in the same way that the gated effect um does does these days but um but maybe it's part of maybe it's just my age then and, and it's just part of getting old but um it's not no um i i still love bass and honestly if if i had if i had room in my car to put sub bass you know if i a couple of subs in there with a nice amplifier because the thing is i used to work all the electronics out myself also you know so i would connect the battery to the capacitor and you know put all the fuses in and, and you know and mold all that stuff together and i would install extra tweeters just to make sure that the sound was right throughout the entire car but i do love that feeling when you get that like boom when it's yeah. nice and crystal clear you know what i mean um and it doesn't matter which song it is whether you're talking about a hip-hop song or whether you're talking about a rock song uh whatever the case may be you know metallica you know lars ulrich one of the one of the greatest drummers of all time for crying out loud uh definitely going to go down in the uh, in the history books as such um you know when when they released the black album and lars ulrich had that had that double kick uh tama drum kit that that he had you know what i mean so mm -hmm. when you were listening to um like enter sandman or you know the unforgiven it was it was all like really bass heavy and it's nice when you when you actually feel the music you know what i mean mm -hmm. w w when you listen to the music but if you get that if you get that like kind of like that kick drum like hitting your back kind of effect it just it, it makes it that much more intense i think personally mm -hmm. and so the thing again being older i know that i need to leave room in my car for groceries and and uh you know today uh i had a couple of stops where i needed to do miscellaneous things so i needed the room so i can't have you know a speaker box just kind of like sitting there but if i could <laughs> i probably would so you know these days it's all about the mids about the mids no woofers <laughs> Carl, i see uh, so yeah, yeah that's part of getting old i reckon yeah. yeah no room no room for woofers no no room for woofers no room for woofers in Tom's <laughs> <laughs> we got no room for woofers <laughs> oh my goodness we'll have to we'll have to we'll have to come up with a segment of music for that you know we got no room for woofers <laughs> <laughs> all righty me and my drugs i'm not talking about me i'm talking about uh well if you <laughs> carl knows I received a very unusual tip um, from from uh, from my passenger uh, driving Uber yesterday, and uh, so me and my drugs. <laughs> tell me about the song, Carl. Right, this is from Dream and Onion, and it says at Aussie. So I presume they're Australian. We, we can only hazard a guess there. They have uh, influences of Daft Punk, Radiohead, Bjork, or Bjork, I should say, uh, System of a Down, Rage Against the Machine. And John Frusciante, all oh, right, okay, Queens of the Stone Age. 
Red Hot Chili Peppers. So sounds like it's going to be a rock, if I remember rightly, but it says alt rock. It says, I decided to remix and remaster all tracks. So this is a remixed and remastered version of one of their songs called Me and My Drugs. Let's check it out. Dream and Onion, Me and My Drugs. Also available on Spotify from the link here. Once again, find all the links in the video description below. Visit all these artists. Show some love. Let's get it going. Dream and Onion, Me and My Drugs.
Me and my drugs. Carlos Fernando, take it away, sir. Right. Um, I think what I like about this one is that it's got such a measured approach. It's it's well paced. Nothing is rushed. It's sort of an assured sort of sound and structure. Um, OK, I think, yeah, you probably could shave off 45 seconds to a minute, but I think the song would probably suffer for it because it it feels like it's meant to be about that sort of length that it is um, because it allows it room to breathe. It's got a sort of oddly enough, it's a slightly crowded house weather with you feel is in there somewhere. The 80s indie sound is there, likes of Spear of Destiny, the cult. Jesus and Mary Chain type of act, acts. Um, but I love the guitar sound. That's a very sort of 80s sounding guitar. And uh, But in particular with the guitar solo, I mean, it wasn't like a, the most um, memorable or stunning guitar solo, but what actually drew my attention was because it was uh, sort of, you know, just a regular, you know, it's good guitar solo, but the bass playing in that solo, during that solo, was really excellent. It's almost like they were sparring. And... Um, there's some really great bass licks in there. I think it's a good bass player. Uh, but um, yeah, I, I, I like that one. And um, I don't always listen to sort of uh, uh, the sort of a lot of that, that sort of music, but I thought it was pretty good. Indie rock sort of sound is that was that was a good song. It was a good song. And I, I was going to ask you, actually, if you felt it commercially viable, you know, being um, uh, five minutes long here and everything. Right. But I, I think I think it would be on, on, on you know, on, on a classic rock station because it does sound like classic rock. The comment that I left, I'm pretty sure that you saw um, is I like the doors versus the Pink Floyd kind of feel with like maybe like this kind of like a little bit of a, a, a radio head kind of drama into it. Um, so this was. It's interesting, but I do feel that the volume should be pushed up. You push up the volume and the song will be that much better because it was recorded like in a pretty low tone. So um, that's really the only kind of like critique that I have about it because otherwise, remember we were talking about the folk implosion the one time on, on I think it was uh, Russ Palladino show we were talking. Maybe not. Maybe it was the show before that. Where, where 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 I was talking about the song Natural One, where I'm the one natural one. He had that kind of like vocal style going, you know what I mean? And and that vocal style for me at least, um, you know, with with this kind of like '90s and and classic era kind of like atmosphere, like really, like really makes this sound like like very nostalgic to me, you know. So it just has this kind of like vibe that like kind of like draws you in and, and like has you kind of like like really paying attention and like listening to the song. And once again, we talked about it twice on the show already. Road trip kind of song. I could definitely see this playing mm. on the radio, on the on the radio, you know, during a road trip. So, I think I think it's overall very nicely done song. I got to say, like like really good production. I would just say, really, just kind of like raise that volume a little bit to to to, to get that little bit of poppiness into it. Whereas, you know, the last song we had a little bit of clipping in the volume. This song we're like really kind of like low in the volume, right? So I would it's, say it's a hard thing to know though, isn't it? Because the thing is, I mean, you know, you, you've got on the sort of the main um stereo out um a part of the well whatever the technical term is. Uh, but basically uh, yeah you've got your digital audio workstation and you might have your multi compressor on there and also then you've got your um oh god the name's gone this memory thing's terrible anyway basically you just check your levels and if it's pushing a certain amount and but not too much yeah <laughs> technical technical stuff here uh the mixer is i'm assuming you're talking about the what the mixer is i'm assuming is what you're talking about uh, not necessarily the mixer it was the no. there's a word i forgot what it is you put this is the multi-presser i always put on it a limiter limiter oh, so when okay. you actually put the limiter on and it's pressing two or three over into the red or something here and there that's good that's okay you know anything less than that is probably a bit quiet you need to push it up but obviously some songs if they're anything like mine you know, where they do go up and down a bit and you know so you need to just it's really hard to uh, judge the correct volumes and then when you sort of listen to one track next to others in slaps and some are really in your face loud kind of thing let me pull out my pocket watch and tell you <laughs> that if uh <laughs> that was actually a magnifying glass by the way um <laughs> if if you have a proper set of monitors this will completely alleviate um any kind of distress that you have with anything because believe me 
if you take your monitors and you take your mixer and you have your finished product turn everything down to zero okay so you want to be at zero decibels with everything okay and your monitor is the same way as zero blah, okay and then play the entire song you will know exactly where you need to make all the changes just a pro tip we should we should kind of like maybe throw some of this stuff out there as we're going along with the show a, a couple of pro tips because believe me believe me a proper set of monitors will help you a million ways from sunday okay so i spent um the first monitors that that i had uh were part of a kind of like a package deal and you know they were okay they were decent you know what i mean but if you have like the four or five, six hundred bucks to spend on a proper set of, of monitors, get them because believe me, believe me, when you hear the sounds actually coming through on a proper set of monitors that are tuned the way that they need to be, makes all the difference in your music. But uh, but again, me and my drugs, dream and onion, great song. And now it's time for part two of the purple ball of destiny oh please well right wow well, they just threw it at you that time wasn't yeah it? i think they were a bit upset that last time your staff right, okay. is violent man if, very much so my assistant is not happy uh right okay i'm the mischievia mischievia i won't look i was looking there i was actually looking in the bowl it was terrible i'll close my eyes see mm -hmm. okay say so when you looked from the bottom stop <laughs> hmm. Oh, okay. Yes, this I like. This I like. Uh, okay, so it's synth wave and retro synth wave. You can choose which you want. Uh, I am uh, going to, go, to go for retro, but yeah. well, I already said it before you. So, oh, did you say retro as well? And I said I'm going to go retro synth. Wave. Yeah, that's what we want a bit of retro. Wow, retro synth wave only has 736 members. Yeah, some of these feel very niche, and yet there are lots of people who love synth music. But it's probably is because the, rather than putting it all under EDM and or electronic and synth all together, you'd have loads of people in that because you've got electronica, uh, EDM, synth, synth wave, retro synth wave, retro synth pop, and all these little offshoots. Rather than having oh, did a Jamira choir there, I just uh, rather yeah. than. I'm just I'm just gonna say I hope we don't get fooled again because I think the last time that we had synth wave we actually ended up with hip hop. It does seem to permeate a lot of different um, mm. not other that, genres. Not that I'm upset with hip hop. I think I, I think I was with the, with the song that we heard. <laughs> I don't recall, but um, synth wave like seriously like let's hear some synth going on right. So uh, this yeah. one I'm sorry I totally interrupted you. That was my fault. It's all right um that, I, I, won't, I won't remember what i was saying but uh, so basically we're going <laughs> retro synth wave i think there's actually two groups as well because one says i'm sure one says retro synth wave two words and one's retro synth wave one word uh the latest one on this though was posted yesterday is what i got oh that's not bad then is it? it's a recent one no so i i I went with the first group that I saw, which was the retro, <laughs> retro, retro synth wave with just one word, yeah, and I hit the brand new. So we have Rem Rem uh, with a song that's called "Back to the Future." Hmm. Uh, so Rem Rem looks like a French flag, but it also looks like a like a Middle Eastern flag. Oh, I see. I see. Um, let's have a little look and see if we can find out there. Oh, it's hard to tell. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure about that. Music producer, electronic songs. Yeah, check my official pages listed below. Visualizers on YouTube. If you like what you hear, please be sure to follow. Um, so we have like dance, up and coming, hip hop, electronic would be the would be the uh, four major categories for for this person. Remember. So this is the one that's the make or break to make this half of the show as good as the first half of not better. So yeah, I'm kind of like yeah. start, I'm starting to think, especially with especially with the uh, influences here, uh, Kid Cudi and Kanye West. I'm starting to think that this is going to be a um, a hip hop beat again. 
So um, let's take a quick, let, let me just take a quick listen here. <laughs> nope. Okay. So I shall rewind that back to the beginning. This kind of look. This, <laughs> it, kind of, it, so, it sounded like it sounded like it was going to be a um, um, more of a kind of like a Jean Michel Jarre kind of thing. Oh, okay. Yeah. We shall check this. We shall check this out. So, uh, Rem Rem, Back to the Future. Uh, hopefully, it's hopefully it's not just the beginning that I listened to that was good there. So. <laughs> Let's get it going, Purple Bowl of Destiny. Don't let us down. The show has been so good so far. Remember, brand new, posted yesterday. Yeah, so cool off the press. Hot off the press. <laughs> Forging. 24 hours old. Cute. Carlos Fandango, take it away, sir. Well, I was so busy writing notes on the song, actually giving it a little bit of fire, uh, that I forgot to write notes on the pad. But um, I've, what I have written is a nice big 80s gated snare on the, uh, you yeah, so the uh, sort of pal thwap and thwack sound that you get in the 80s. Um, nicely put together, lots of different synth sounds. And I've put wouldn't sound out of place on the Stranger Things soundtrack. Had quite a nice build, you know, a bit of ebb and flow. Um, I, I think I was, I'm always hopeful with synth wave and retro synth and synth music that they'll have 
a vocal on it but so often it's just instrumentals and that's it so but i think there was enough going on because there's a bit of variety in there um i do like to hear a bit of vocal on the synth and i think it would be good to hear more vocals and and vocalists doing synth music but it does seem to be a sort of the domain of the uh, instrumentalist mostly which is no bad thing because you know, you've got great artists like van gillis and tangerine dream and uh, uh well all of those and, and uh, Jean -Michel -Jean and so forth max richter and there's so many and good artists so yeah there's definitely a, a market for it um but uh, yeah it was pretty good good um okay so I hopped on our WhatsApp group group chat and uh, and I forwarded that song immediately to uh, Justine Painter, Wayward Waves, and uh, I told her that I think you'll like this and uh, I think that she will. Um, I think that the feeling that it gives you is is okay. So let me start off with this. Let me gather my thoughts <laughs> and let me just start off with that. I think that the Purple Bowl has done its job twice today. With uh, with picking out the actual correct category here and the correct music, um, because that was definitely the retro synth wave. Uh, it had that vibe, and it really once again we've talked about them before. Muse, um, when they did their song simulate, not their song, their album the simulation theory, um, but also once again like Jar and anybody else. I'm with you on the fact that this needs some lyrics behind it because. There's two things missing, and that is lyrics and, and a climax. Um, the song kind of like seems to go on a steady flow, like from beginning to end. So as far as the viability of it goes, like commercially, it could the, the, this could definitely very well be in you know a futuristic sci-fi movie somewhere, you know what I mean? <clears throat> as a backing track to something that's going on you know a conspiracy is breaking out you know whatever you know you got something going on there this could definitely be in a movie there's a lot of commercial viability for it but um but as far as like let's say like something to kind of like keep on repeat on your playlist then i would think that add some lyrics to it go like the uh depeche mode kind of like a uh, format with it or just kind of like um i don't know I don't know. I'm kind of like at a loss for words because I like it so much, but then there's just like two elements missing and I can't place them together at the same time. Help me out here, Carl. Help me out. Help me out. I'm not sure what it is missing. I mean, it might be that there's, uh, there's little bits in there. Maybe uh, uh, I think for me, it might be that there's a really strong lead synth. It, if you haven't got a vocal on there, then the voice of the song needs to be. A synthesizer of sorts and a very strong defined synthesizer so perhaps it's that that's missing is that there's there's nothing taking the lead as such it could it, it could be because it almost it almost sounds not that i'm not that i'm you know accusing but, but it, it could almost sound as if it were looped right because you you have that banana 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 you have that kind of like going on the entire time and then you know with the with the high pitch sent there overall i really think great song really really do i i really enjoyed it and um and i forwarded it to once again a friend that that uh that is in the electronic music business herself as well and um i think it's got high potential really high potential but um but yeah one of those one of those two aspects either create like a huge climax or get some vocals in there and i really think that that will work so much better but great song overall mm -hmm. very much thoroughly enjoyed it and um once again ppod purple bowl of destiny definitely earning it it's keep today mm, definitely moving on, <laughs> moving on to the, uh, the the part of the show that starts to get me a little bit like uh oh boy song number nine and, well, and please to know i mean if it's if it's you're worried about the show ending soon then this is a long track is six minutes and six seconds yes, so yes. this will stretch out that that pain a little bit you know and, and uh hopefully it'll eat well ease the pain because it's such a long song yes. so uh but i think you'll like this one um yes. this is uh yves they, uh from uh Chevreurs in france uh leonard 
Cordibel is the artist who is uh, Yves They. It's, it's Y V T H E with an accent. Um, so um, and and the um, song is called All Your Words. Now uh, Leonard's Leonard's doesn't say about many influences, but you will like this as well. It's got um, uh, Howard Shaw, Hans Zimmer, Bjork, Aphex Twin interesting and daft punk as influences oh. mm, i think you're gonna like this one so I, when i heard this i i had to listen to it about three times straight i thought i'm so going funny. to turn the monitors up for damn sure yeah, that, you've definitely benefit from turning the monitors up any yeah. listeners and viewers watching this one you could, when you listen to it listen to it on some good speakers uh, i think you'll like it go ahead i'll give you all a second <laughs> turn those monitors up Turn your phone up. Turn the volume up. Turn the woofers in your car up. There you go. See, you're you're listening to the underground sound. You should be having the volume all the way up. Anyway, once again, we are putting the us back into music. Mm. So please, <laughs> so we having the whiskey. I wasn't expecting that one. So please do like, subscribe, and share, and we'll find the music that you love to hear. Cheers, and cheers from this side of the pond as well um so if there i'm gonna i'm gonna assume all your words and uh if the influences live up to the hype of the song right here then we're going to be in for a treat enjoy all your words you walk around don't make a sound Wounds over Your own body You say nothing But it matters You fuck them all You Times when you're so
Well, I'll be damned if that song doesn't need to be 20 minutes long, Carl. I know. I could listen to that for so much longer. Happily have a whole half, well, if it was an LP, whole half side of a record on that. That was just brilliant. I mean, it's just like, um, what can you say? It's got melody, harmony, the arpeggiators, the pad synths. The vocal, though, I mean, it's the, um, so I don't know if that's like a guest vocalist who's a female artist or if that's Leonard um, with sort of like a, a young, because quite young artist by the look of it, that may have just that falsetto higher voice. If it's a stunning voice. I mean, just just absolutely really distinctive voice that sounds, that sort of transcends the male, female <laughs> vocal is really good. Um, but the church organ at the start and that chord change before the all your words come chorus comes in is awesome it's something like richard wright would do in uh, pink floyd uh you've got it the song itself is just haunting it's moody it's atmospheric it's almost like a sort of massive attack sort of moodiness to it um big build up to the beat coming in the beat drops brilliantly and uh and then it comes out again it's just so measured steady um sort of a, a pink floydian intro as well i mean if they were doing music in the modern day still now i think this is po partially how it would sound uh i think it's a bit special the vocal fade out at the end is really nice i love that the the music sort of just but as the vocals are fading out it feels to me like the automations on the volumes is you know just brought up so the music everything's done so precisely the music's just brought up as the vocal fades out and it just adds to the tension and the um drama of the song uh for me yes that could have gone on longer still i'd be happy to listen to it and just keep listening to that song i would press repeat about three or four times on that one uh at least and i think that's one of my favorites this year so far yeah yeah 2022 is not yet over <laughs> <laughs> there's more to come as well we still have the best of the 2022s to go but i think Man, that's really going to um, uh, to jump up my list here, because uh, I was I, I was thinking so many things as that song was going through and trying to and trying to um, absorb everything that was going on in that song as well. Because I kind of like, you know, it almost sounded like like a tuba when you, you know you had it in the background like that wah kind of like, but it, it, it's just it's unreal because you could take like. Um, like these uh amy winehouse or adele type type uh type the strength of the vocals there right that were added on to the song so so the comment that was made on the previous song with kind of like this retro synth wave lacking um vocals well this would be the result because it definitely has this kind of like um retro feel to it with this new modern twist and like you said the moodiness of massive attack right and um and did you ever did you ever get a chance to watch that movie that i was telling you about oblivion no no i only mentioned susie the other day because i said to her have you seen it i bet you have she said no i haven't so we will watch it at some point watch it listen to that soundtrack man because this this is the song and i guarantee you that you'll come back after you watch it and you'll say the same thing as this is a song that would fit so well in that soundtrack not only would it fit, fit well into that soundtrack but the whole thing is that the song is so commercially viable because the this this song really kind of like brings forth like um just emotion so I'm gonna, I'm gonna agree with you here is that i don't know if this is uh leonard kind of like you know um going through a transitioning phase on the voice but i mean the the entire atmosphere of this song is damn well near perfection because we're talking about um uh kind of like alan walker kind of like type type feel to it as well and um my goodness <laughs> I, I really don't know i really don't know where to go where to go with the compliments here i really don't I, I don't know where to start and i don't know where to stop with the compliments because 
everything is just just really working for the song the uh the as carl says all the time the ebb and flow the the feeling the emotion the uh the drama the vocals were dramatic they were dark they were deep but yet uplifting at the same time the the, the rhythm really moves you i should I, I gotta forward this one to justine as well just she's gonna love this one yeah, i think absolutely I, my brother i'm gonna send this to him because i i keep meaning to sit down with him with uh, monitor speakers and go through all the list because there's a lot of songs here like particularly the synth ones and this he would absolutely love i mean i know it straight away when i hear certain songs that he's gonna love them and i did i i, I do think this is one of my favorites and i love this kind of this is my this is this song um illustrates my point about if the music is good you do not care how long the song is and it doesn't need to be three minutes or three minutes 30 or anything like that if it's a good song and the music pulls you all the way and pushes you and moves you around and moves your soul and hits you right at the core then you don't even notice the time go by once again folks if you need any reason to listen to the underground sound then this song will be it because uh we have so many fantastic artists out there so many fantastic musicians this show has been just non-stop probably one of our best i'm gonna say like mm -hmm. 19 it has to be our lucky number somehow some way somehow <laughs> 19 has to be our lucky number because we've been listening to fantastic music all throughout the day here and uh and that song was absolutely no exception that song is probably going to be our top song of the show because it is going to be playlisted it is going to be promoted it is a certified banger it is the bomb i'm <laughs> gonna say it is the bomb drop the bomb fucking let's end the show right here let's end the show right now. no no i no. should have done that as a no, showstopper no. i just thought it's too slow for a showstopper so we need to oh, goodness, point no, usually so but yeah i mean i would have been happy to end on this end on that one then play it again you know yeah, no, I th that song that song has a lot of appeal everywhere, all over the place. So, uh, so letter, uh, great job, fantastic job, keep it up. You know, um, oh, oh, you know, Delorentis, I have to send this to her as well because oh you, yes, that's, that's gonna yes. be that's gonna be right up her alley as well. Uh, you know, both uh, both French, uh, both making you know uh, terrific music right there. So well, yeah, you know, do you know, could you imagine if they collaborated, Tom? I mean, the vocals because De Laurentiis' vocals are strong as well, and her musicality is great. And clearly, Leonard has got musicality in every pore. Um, so I think yeah, this would be great to to try and try and get them together to collaborate because you imagine the sort of music they could make. That would be that would actually be fantastic because imagine a couple act coming together mm -hmm. right and, and creating something something like this because uh, still to this day uh, two of my favorite songs from from de Laurentiis are uh Unica's cloud the rooftop sessions and um and uh, uh, the, uh a big part of the big sun which was the uh, the live sessions with her friend uh, matilde that was playing on the violin as they were as they were doing this whole thing live and that was absolutely phenomenal so you know you could put an entire show around this like i mean get some lighting and some effects and you know create an awesome love story or something like that you know and you have uh, the makings of a really 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 great show so i'm gonna reach out to her um to her publicist i know her publicist fanny and um we speak and i'm just going to forward that to her because that's just it is it's just it's just one of those songs where it's it's a damn shame that this show does have to come to an end because if we could if we could be up for 24 hours a day and we could just keep on listening to music and critiquing it that's what we would do mm. because but it just goes to show these 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 songs these artists they're out there these independent they should be snapped up by somebody and uh but yeah luckily for us they're making the music and putting it out there yeah because it was so fortunate to have people like that making those kind of songs that are that high quality it's incredible it is absolutely and i want to thank each and every single indie musician that's out there that's looking to kind of like break through and make it big and like really put pouring their heart and soul into this thing because you guys are really the fuel that makes the show possible uh we love listening to your music believe me we have listened to countless hours of music here and uh we have playlisted a lot of songs and by all means folks once again visit the video description below find the links to all these artists go visit them show them some love say 
hello, give them a fire, save them on your playlist, do whatever you need to do, spread some love amongst the music community because uh, we all know that everybody likes music. It's kind of like Aubrey uh, Plaza had said in the movie um, Funny People, did you just really ask me if I like music? That's asking me if I like to eat or if I like food, something like that. There was a line somewhere along those lines, right? So everybody loves music. It's one common language that we all share. So please, by all means, once again, visit these musicians, grab this music to put on your playlist and show some love to these musicians and tell them you love them. You don't have to tell them that we recommended it. It's just go and check them out yourself. So, man, great show. And unfortunately, we are at the showstopper here. Yes, I have one question for you. Tom, do you love me? I do love you. Oh, see, I gave you the feeder line there. The next song is called Yes, I Love You. I thought oh. you were going to say that, you see. <laughs> oh, uh, <laughs> close, close. <laughs> this is um, our friend Lion J, uh, or otherwise known as Leon Jacobs. Um, and uh, we had, uh, I think it was My Country Song or something like that, where it was very jolly upbeat. In fact, I think that was a show close at that time. So uh, I thought we'd go with one of his ones. Um, really like this one. And it's, uh, I think it was an upbeat, positive message and, and a nice, nice sort of happy, cheery uh, show closer. Leon, um, it was, he was from Australia, yes? That's right, yes, because, um, uh, da -da 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 -da. yes, Vereeniging, South Africa. South Africa. South Africa, sorry. Vereeniging, South Africa. And, uh, yeah, it's just uh, performing artists, right, sings, uh, own and other artists' music. But, uh, yes, done quite a few songs actually uploaded here. But um, And I like all his artwork, actually. He's quite sort of slick on the artwork, pictures and things. He's and I think, Yeah, yeah. And this one contains what I, I imagine to be probably his other half. And uh, because it's a song about an encounter, that leads to a love that sticks and lasts. So I'm, I'm assuming this is dedicated to his um, wife or partner. Uh, I was going to say is that the artwork kind of like reminds me of if, uh, if, if, if Johnny Cash was doing music today, mm. <laughs> that, the, that these are probably the poses he'd be striking. This is kind of like maybe the art, the way that the artwork would be going. I do remember, I don't, I don't remember the song completely. I do remember it but I don't remember it like 100%. Uh, I thought he was from Australia, but hey, South Africa, close enough, I guess. Right? <laughs> <laughs> but no, I mean, well, it's yeah, me it's being just... sarcastic. It's a completely <laughs> different continent for crying out loud, folks. <laughs> I was just making a joke right there. Jesus. DJ X actually got canceled, canceled one too. Yeah? <laughs> Go ahead, cancel us. Yeah. We'll, we'll find a way to make it back, trust me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> by the way uh speaking of making a comeback um starting the new year the underground sound radio station will be back uh it was formerly known as tampa bay's pulse radio but um the fcc has given approval and uh i am just waiting for one more license which i believe is the csac license so um we will have the radio station back for the new year hopefully uh if everything goes smoothly so uh i will be changing the name and it will be the underground sound so you'll hear sound bites of carl and i introducing songs like hey carl and you know we'll do some wacky sound effects like her, 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 and we'll get the morning show kind of stuff going but until then let us enjoy lion j with yes carl i love you oh was i meant to say i love you too <laughs> <laughs> probably but, should have rather just gone ah oh. yeah but instead you said ah oh, so there we go <laughs> oh thanks i love you to hang out the washing please <laughs> yes a, a brotherly love as we mentioned before but yes yeah oh yeah a manly manly brotherly love yes manly brotherly love <laughs> <laughs> yes <laughs> I've been thinking about you There's just something about your hair 
And those sexy jeans you like to wear I cannot get you Out of my mind How do I leave these thoughts behind Leave these thoughts behind My heart, find your soul, feel every kiss, give the passion of my love a place to flow. For you are the reason why I'm just a little shy to say I love you. Yes, I love you. show closer folks carlos fandango take it away sir right well uh, i think um this is what i would describe as a proper song yeah like the old-fashioned sort of songs um it's got lots of nice elements in it it's got nice melody and harmonies um he's got very nice natural vibrato in his voice in fact <clears throat> the style of the song the chords the singing and the nice chorus and post chorus as well because it's quite a long chorus um in in some respects um it reminds me of roy orbison so if roy orbison was still alive this would be perfect for him he would totally smash this out of the park as as does uh, leon j a uh, lion j uh, now the chords and the strings at the start as well remind me of um Justin Hayward and John Lodge's Blue Guitar, one of my favourite songs of the 70s, and uh, it's just that dreamy quality to the strings. Really nicely done. Um, and the guitar picking, digga, 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 all that kind of stuff, lovely sound. And I really like on the chorus, it really makes the song rhythmically, it's great, because you've got that lovely, nice, subtle um, uh, ride cymbal going on the offbeat and it just makes you sort of really sort of nod your head foot uh tap your feet and it, it just moves the song another good sort of traveling along song i would say on a nice sort of highway motorway ride and um and a very nice sentiment a nice way to end the show i agree um so kind of like what i wrote down here is if you could think of like let's say 
uh, I know that you said Roy, Roy Orbison here, right? But I, I was thinking, you know, more if you if you got like John Denver, Willie Nelson with a with a Bruce Springsteen kind of like delivery. If you mix like the three of them, had like a mashup, I think that you would have like Lion J here. Um, loved the guitar plucking. You know, that's something that's that's very uh, kind of like catchy earwormy in in, in your head. And uh, the song over overall is obviously as the last one, very well produced. Um, very nicely done. All the harmonies and the melodies, and uh, like you mentioned, the uh, the timbre of his voice and everything, all come out very professionally. Um, so great track. It's definitely a foot tapper. I'm pretty sure you saw me here. I was kind of like you know twiddling my thumbs on my on my chest and everything. So just kind of like keeping going with the beat here. And uh, so yeah, Lion J. Yes, I love you. It's a great song. A song about an encounter that leads to a love that sticks and lasts. Sounds like the sentiment and the just like us, Tom. Just like us. Of the, of the yeah, our relationship. <laughs> it does. Chance encounter on slaps. dot com. It's, it's, exactly. <laughs> and it's led maybe, to all this. Maybe, uh, maybe Lion J has uh, has wrote has written that for us. You never know. Oh, could be. I never could thought be. of it. Yes, of yeah, yeah, it could have been. Chance encounter leads to an awesome, fantastic indie music review show. <laughs> what could you ask for exactly just come on it's a love story in the making <laughs> yeah but well, uh, we love music we love music that's the thing and uh, i hope you know all the, our audience that gradually join us and stick with us all the way through the journey yeah really enjoy the show enjoy the music and yeah they're here because they love music too absolutely um yeah folks uh once again, the show is is all about finding the new stuff that's out there because, you know, if you hop in your car, you turn on the radio station, whichever one it may be that you listen to. If you're listening to a country station or a rock station or a hip-hop station, especially like the hip-hop stations these days, I got to say it honestly. Um, except except for when I was visiting New York last year in in, uh, in, in July, um, I definitely noticed that the uh, that the city there, they had they had a lot of, a lot of music that I had not yet heard in um in florida um at least on the radio i should say so you know um we do strive to kind of like bring you the best of the best of the best out there um the purple bowl of destiny tries as well <laughs> uh sometimes <laughs> it may mess with us but you know but hey um our sole intention here is honestly to get the music of these wonderful musicians out there uh we know from personal experience how difficult it is to build ourselves up and to get our music out there it's a labor of love if you if you absolutely love what you're doing and you love the music that you're doing then it's going to come across for the people that actually listen to it and um we applaud um everyone that is sitting there right now while we're recording this like so they're tediously in front of their computer and they're in their in their mixing board whatever the case may be tweaking those volumes thinking of those lyrics thinking about like hey what's catchy here what can be hooky here and making these songs up because uh believe me until you've actually created a song you don't know how much work actually goes into it um so really from from the from the bottom of my heart and i'm sure from the bottom of carlos's heart as well we do thank every single musician that is out there pushing out this fantastic music and we do thank every single one of our uh subscribers or listeners whatever the case may be we do thank you for hopping aboard and um paying homage to these to these artists as it were and um giving them maybe a little bit more motivation to uh, keep going with what they're doing because it is easy, especially when you're making music to kind of like think like, well, you know, this isn't going anywhere. Maybe we should stop. But if uh, if that happened, then we would never have Pink Floyd. We would never have The Doors. We would never have Led Zeppelin. We would never have Depeche Mode. We would never have Eminem. We would never have Dr. Dre and any of the other artists that have ever created music. So from the bottom of my heart and once again I, th I do believe that from the bottom of carlos van angle's heart we thank you for tuning into this 19th edition of the underground sound i am djx tech with me as always as carlos van angle we are putting the us back into music so please do <laughs> like subscribe and share and we'll find the music that you like to hear any closing thoughts you'd like to throw in 
Well, I've got to say, um, the more I think about Eve there, all your words, I feel like that's going to be, well, it might be. It's 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 up there as one of my favourites this year. And when I hear, heard it tonight, I was um, blown away again. And I, I I seriously think that's that's going to be one of my favourites possibly my favorite of this year and and the thing is any music i've discovered this year uh hasn't been mainstream it's all been independent stuff the interesting stuff i've discovered and and that that particular song is it really captured me and i think i'm going to be listening i'll get that one. i mean i'm a bit old-fashioned i still get things on apple music itunes you know so so i'll probably buy that this weekend or something and uh, i know i can get it on spotify and all that but um and I will be playing that incessantly because I obsess over certain songs and, and that will be one of those that I just carry on listening to. Yeah. I've got to play that to my brother. He's going to absolutely do his nut and love it. I think I think that that's, you know, um, you know, in, in an alternate dimension, I'm pretty sure that this is number one on the charts somewhere. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> mm. Once again, I can't thank the musicians out there for enough for pumping out this music over here. Uh, we really want to blow kisses to all of you, our viewers here and uh, and listeners. And please, once again, visit the video description below. Find the links to these fantastic artists. And don't forget, we are not self-serving, but why not do this is don't forget about Carlos and I. We are musicians as well. So if you like classic rock or if you like, uh, you know, kind of like electronic EDM stuff, then check us both out there. We'll have that in the video description as well for you. Thank you for joining us today and uh, have a very pleasant weekend. And we will see you shortly with um, episode 20 and then our Christmas special and then our New Year's Eve spectacular. We'll see you then. Ta-ta for now. All right.